What's up everybody, thanks for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel. The Century Visca is here for testing. And um, for anybody not familiar, this is a, an AK-47 that uses S7 tool steel for its trunnions, which makes it a outside the box kind of bear. Uh, and I originally was not going to do this project. In fact, I s publicly stated that I was not going to do this project uh, for a variety of reasons, but chief among those was I don't believe that S7 tool steel is what we should be making trunnions out of. If you guys have ever seen a AK fire in slow motion, there's a lot of flexion going on there, and I'm concerned that S7 may interrupt that balance. We're going to find out. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos that we're going to perform a 5,000 round test on this rifle. I do not do 5,000 round tests generally. However, I, this was specifically requested. Um, it's not my gig. Usually my testing is built around 1,500 rounds for all guns regardless of type. Uh, this is just kind of a special case. So I've kind of put together a procedure. I've written it down. I've published it. You guys can go watch it. Hopefully you find it reasonable. Strip bolt. Go gauge. Go gauge in. We'll let it roll over. I'm going to go ahead and hold it there. Should be between two and three. There, there you guys have it and your stereotypical field test. Close. So in this video, we're gonna cover initial photography, uh, basically looking at any kind of like factory imperfections that we can see, get an overview of the rifle and kind of see what we're starting with. And then we're also going to do uh, initial accuracy and initial die chem tests. And for those of you not familiar with that, it's basically a test that tells us how the locking lugs are interacting. And, that, and this time we're gonna do it right out the box. Uh, and then we'll track it over time to see how that changes over the course of the test. So the other reason that I did not want to do this project is because, let's just be honest guys, uh, regardless of the results of this test, there are going to be three groups of people. There are going to be the people who are reasonable and they will take whatever results happen and use them to, uh, to make informed decisions about the product. And then you've got the Century fanboys that are going to love everything that they put out, and then you're going to have the Century haters that are going to hate it no matter what, and they're not going to see any validity in this test whatsoever. So I just didn't want to deal with that. Along the same lines, I have to say that I cheated on this one. And what I mean by that is I violated my own protocol. Usually when a gun comes here, I don't watch anything on it prior to it arriving because I don't want to establish a bias for or against that product uh, based on what I've seen. Well, in this particular instance, that was nearly impossible. And I will full disclosure say that I've seen both the Jaeger piece and the Mr. Guns and Gears piece. And uh, I did see a disturbing prevailing trend in Mr. Guns and Gears piece. People basically ripping on him that he uh, received the gun from Sentry. Guys, this is a standard industry practice. If you are under any delusion that most of the media that you see based around guns isn't because a manufacturer sent the firearm to the person, then you are bonkers, okay? Just laying that out there, it's standard industry practice. However, I do have to say that I have to lend a little bit of credence here because of the RS-47 situation. So I had seven RS-47s come through here with zero issues. Yet on the internet, I see these guns are blowing up everywhere. So I have to say, well, hey, what's the deal here? Are we getting a different gun than what the consumer is getting? Are they custom building these guns for reviewers? I don't know. I don't know at all. Now, I will tell you that I encourage manufacturers to send their best work here. And you can ask any manufacturer that has physically come to the VSO compound that this is like the Bermuda Triangle of guns. Shit just breaks here for whatever reason. So I encourage manufacturers to send their best work. However, in this particular instance, I thought that it was important that we get a sample from distribution. So what I did is I went on the internet, I went to Big Daddy Unlimited, and I purchased a Visca Poly, which is the polymer version of the Visca rifle. It's the same gun, it's just got polymer furniture on it instead of the wood furniture. And that's the gun that we have here today. Now, full disclosure guys, I'm an FFL. So I can have a 
product that I ordered from Big Daddy Unlimited shipped directly to my door. You are gonna have to go through a licensed dealer. You're gonna have to provide them with an FFL so they can send the merchandise to you if that's what you're using the service for. Along with that, full disclosure, I paid like $545 or something like that for the gun. It was in the agreement that Sentry had to cut me a check for that amount so that I did not have any financial bias going into this test. I don't want it to be mine. I want it to be just any other test subject, but I wanted it to be from distribution so that we can see if there's a difference between what we're getting as a consumer versus what's going out to the reviewers. Along the same lines, I required that Sentry Arms send me all of the ammunition for the test, so all 5,000 rounds and a pile of magazines to fill out the test matrix. Again, no financial bias on my part. I don't want any emotion tied to this project whatsoever. I wanna be able to treat it like any other test subject and just beat the piss out of it. Along those same lines, I had reached out to Gun Mag Warehouse and they provided some Bulgarian magazines to give us a different look from the Magpul magazines that ship with the rifle, uh, just to see, again, if a different magazine design makes any difference. Uh, special thanks to them for helping with that. We will be shooting 124 grain hollow point ammunition from Red Army Standard. That's the purple sealant stuff that you've seen us use previously. No go gauge. No close. So by now you guys should have definitely seen some pictures rolling in from the rifle when new. And we'll get to the overview of some of the subtle nuances that I uncovered during the initial overview. Uh, but before we do, I wanted to say that I shoot a lot, guys. Okay, and I'm not going to get anything substantive out of shooting 5,000 rounds through this rifle. So I said, you know what, this doesn't even sound fun either. How can I change that? And what I did is I walked into several of our local law enforcement agencies and said, hey, you know what, I got this thing coming up. Uh, would you guys be interested in coming out and getting some trigger time? Free of charge, I'll have the magazines loaded and all that sort of stuff for you guys. You just have to come out and shoot. And my thinking was, uh, small town America, our local agencies don't have a whole lot of money. And this is an opportunity for them to get some target practice as well as to get some experience on a rifle uh, that they would otherwise have no access to. So uh, that's what we did. And uh, hopefully they will be here later in the week so that we can go out and do some blasting uh, on this particular rifle. So we've already established that the gun is made using S7 tool steel for its trunnions, and those would be presumably milled out of S7, uh, but there were definitely a few cast parts in the firearm. I'm not entirely sure about the bolt. If it is cast, then they did a really good job cleaning it up, and I don't see any casting lines on it, uh, but I did find a casting mark on the carrier near the rear. The other cast part that I identified was the bullet guide, and this is a relatively low stress part. A lot of manufacturers use a cast version of this part, uh, but the note here is that this is really ugly cast, as you guys can see. Continuing on, speaking about the carrier, there is a prolific milling line inside of the channel where the cam rides, and I think it's important to mention it now because I could see myself later definitely identifying that as a crack later. Uh, but it is here from the factory, that's for sure. Now, right next to that, on the wings of the cam, there is a slight imperfection in the metal uh, that I also need to note so that later uh, I can see how it changes or grows. One more thing on the carrier, there is a burr on the right rail guide. It may or may not be a problem. Uh, we'll see as the gun moves metal. The staking on the piston is good. There's a little bit of play that you guys can hear there. Of the, uh, of the thing, it should have a couple millimeters each way of play, and that is properly done, it looks like. So here we come to a positive of cheating. I've seen this reference previously. Uh, there is a milling line on the right side of the trunnion, and I've seen some people say potentially it could be a crack. Uh, this one has it from the factory. It is indeed a milling line. So as for an overview of the rifle, all the rivets look good. Some of them may be a little flatter than others, but for the most part, they look good inside and out. Now on the receiver, I will note that it looks like this receiver is an old receiver for a different project that was uh, drilled for an optics mount. The Visca does not have an optics mount, so it looks like they've used those receivers and put plugs in the receiver. Uh, we'll have to monitor those to make sure that they don't fall out over time. 
Now, your mileage may vary, but in my opinion, I think uh, that a rifle, when it's new, should show up and it should look good, at least out of the box. And this is where I really have to ding Century pretty hard. Uh, this rifle does not look very visually pleasing. What I mean by that is, and it may be hard to, de to detect this, I may do some things with the lighting to make it more uh, prevalent, but none of the metal on this gun matches. So the dust cover looks different than the receiver, looks different from the trunnion, looks different from the rear sight tower, looks different from the barrel, looks different from the gas tube, looks different from the front sight post. So like, it, it does not look like the, the metal was uniformly treated. Uh, now, does that mean metallurgical issues? Mm, probably not, but I, it's just one of those final execution points. The, the gun looks almost like it was assembled together from parts instead of a complete rifle uh, that was built from the ground up. So I have to give some dings there on that. And also, the polymer furniture looks like somebody s spilled some kind of corrosive material on it. I find it hard to believe uh, that they all look this way. Um, I want to say that maybe Sport South, we have a fan at Sport South and they're maybe punking us on this one. Uh, they had 570 some of these things in stock when I purchased the thing. And I find it hard to believe that they went through and found one that looks really ugly to send to us. But it's almost like somebody picked this rifle to send here because it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get geared up. We're going to go out to the range. We're going to shoot the initial accuracy on this gun. We're not looking for a long-range performance on this thing. What I'm really looking to see is whether or not the rifle grows its group size uh, over the course of the 5,000-round test and, more importantly for this gun, shifts its point of impact. So I want to see if the sight tower is moving around on the gun through this testing. If it doesn't move in 5,000 rounds, it's probably not going to move at all through its life. So the question is, if you set it, does it stick? Ooh. 